Tyler Green, it's a pleasure to have you here on the Single Track Podcast. Hey, pleasure to be here. Uh, I love I love listening to Single Track. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate the endorsement, and uh, likewise, it's great to have you here. Always appreciate getting your your insights ahead of races like UTMB, and uh, I think it's a good place to start. But one of the questions that I had lined up for you that I want to cover because I think it's it's applicable. You had this major podium result at Trans Grand Canaria way back in uh, in February of this year. And I remember we were chatting about it on a shakeout run before Western. And I want to bring it back up here because I'm wondering, maybe more so than Western states where you've had a lot of success, is is that race experience, when you look at that race experience, is that validation that you can compete at the highest level at bigger mountain races like UTMB? Like talk about talk about the insights from that race and whether it was a confidence builder for uh, what you have on deck here in a few weeks. Yeah, it's funny because it, after after Western States, you were like, "Well, you proved you proved that um, Trans Grand Canaria wasn't a fluke," which kind of suggested <laughs> that you thought it was. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I'm I'm actually kind of wondering as I'm going into this, and you know, time will tell. This race result will probably tell a lot. Um, if it was actually like the UTMB race that might have been the the real fluke that you know things didn't go right for a number of reasons, which I've been able to kind of track back and, and find a few things that I can definitely improve upon. Um, but that was, I mean, go, looking at, at Trans Grand Canaria as a place where I wanted to rectify some of that bigger mountain running um, and, and do a little bit better at it. Um, I feel like, you know, I, I'm able to bring a little bit more confidence into UTMB. UTMB is a much bigger beast. It's longer in mileage. It's longer and it's it's bigger in its elevation. But uh, it, it definitely is um, something that I can, you know, hang my hat on. Uh, yeah, because I because I did okay at TDS um, and definitely not great at, at UTMB. So some improvement to be made there, and that's a part of it to to do yeah, transport area well. Thanks to Features Socks for supporting our UTMB coverage. This is my go-to sock for trail running. It's comfortable, it's durable, it's fashionable. If you're curious, if you want to try a pair yourself, head over to their website. You can use code SINGLETRACK20 at checkout for 20% off your next order. This episode is also sponsored by Ola Dance. Ola Dance has been my go-to choice for headphones the last 10 months. I've used these in training. I've used them in racing. There's a couple things that I love, especially first, I've gotten 16 hours of battery life in these headphones on a single charge. They have superior sound quality. Their open ear design means you don't get that achy feeling uh, after long periods of usage, and you still get to hear your surroundings too, to some extent for safety purposes. Uh, these look great. They fit great. If you're curious, if you want to try a pair, head over to oladance.com forward slash ST. And if you use the code ST at checkout, you'll get $30 off a pair of these OSW2 headphones. They're awesome. I've used them in just about every training environment possible. I recommend them. Go check them out. It's fascinating to me. I, I guess I, I had never added up how many times you've done this double before, but you know, last year, fourth at Western, uh, I think top 50 at UTMB. And then in 2021, you did second at Western, 10th at TDS. What have you learned in these past three years about the demands of this double and maybe how to make peak performance or close to peak performance possible at both races? Um, I, well, I'd say the last two years, 21 and 22, um, were more of a get, get some, it, it, it was finish Western States. Western States is the priority. And then after that, I can start to um, think about what I want to do at the end of summer. And, you know, in 21, it was like, oh, let's just do, t let's do TDS. And I was teaching at the time and was able to get the, the first few days of, of school off to be able to do that while I couldn't do UTMB. And then the next year, it was, I was actually registered for CCC, thinking like maybe this is a ne next step in development towards UTMB. And then it just after Western States, I thought, I think I just need to do the real thing and just get around the mountain regardless and use it as learning yeah. experience. Like the best way to train for UTMB for 2023 is probably to run it in 2022 to get the experience. <laughs> um, so that was my, that was my thinking uh, last year. But that being said, I didn't do any 
no workouts at all post Western States last year, no workouts in after 2021 of Western States. It was more just like get a bunch of climbing in. And the challenge being that I was in the Northwest, which is, you know, you can get your, you can get your climbs in, but it's an hour drive one way. It's an hour drive the other way for the most part. So, um, so I wasn't, you know, it, you, that just stunts your recovery a little bit, those types of things. Whereas mm -hmm. now, um, you know, shortly after Western States, we, we have been traveling and staying mostly in Chamonix, but a little bit in other places in Europe and, and been able to train and it's just like out the back door, get your climbing in. So, um, that's where I think that's the big learning. The, the thing that I've learned is like, well, if you want to do well at a race, you got to spend some time at it and you gotta, you gotta kind of have just get more confident on these types of trails. I was going to say, uh, and I actually, I asked the same question to Tom Evans earlier today, have July and August felt more like recovery from Western States and sort of this risk mitigation process to get to you, Tim, be healthy? Or do you feel like having been over there on the ground, in addition to getting in, you know, terrain specific work, you could push the envelope in terms of workload and workouts and long runs and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, I think I, I've definitely haven't like held like, <laughs> I feel like I recover pretty well from Western States. I mean, the next weekend, like that Saturday or Sunday, we went on a, a big mountain adventure. I mean, it was slow. It was like a 17 mile run, but it had like 8,500 feet and, and took like six and a half hours or something like that. It was like off trail sort of thing. And I was like, I could feel the fatigue in my legs still, but you know, then I took an easy, another easier week. And then it was, kind of time to, to get going. You mentioned being over in Europe, getting there early. I think you arrived in mid July. So maybe it's been over a month now, which, which seems awesome. Are you someone that having had, you know, four or five weeks over there now, do, do you believe that it's sort of a prerequisite for, uh, you know, competitive intent and peak performance at UTMB? Like, do you need to start spending summers over there on repeat in, in the Chamonix area to, uh, to put together a similar result like you did at Western States or that you have at Western States consecutively over the years? I don't think there's a one size fits all approach to how to train and, and race for this thing. I think that we, like my wife and I had the opportunity to, to do something like this. And next year, um, like in June, we'll be going off to probably living somewhere else. And um, my wife's starting residency uh, somewhere, in, somewhere in the United States. Um, so this was an opportunity for us that we talked about for a while and, and finally decided to take. Um, so I think that it's, it's certainly helpful. Um, like I was just watching some YouTube UTMB videos and I was like, oh, I know that section now. Oh, I know that section now. And I don't think having run it once I would have real, I would have noticed all of that, but having been there like a second time and been able to kind of like soak in the views and, and see all the different, both, both the course and trails around here. And now I'm starting to really understand this place. And the other stuff is just like, we are cooking our own meals as opposed to like getting here and kind of scrambling to get everything ready and just eating out. Like, so we're, you know, eating things that are a little bit more familiar to us. Um, taking our extra naps, like just settling into the space is, is really important. And, um, I think it's possible, like people certainly do it in a two week turnaround where they live somewhere else and, and come here and, and go and race well. Um, but I want to get, I definitely want to give myself the best shot. And I think that that comes down to being here. Yeah. Thanks to Kodiak Cakes for sponsoring this UTMB coverage. I have used and loved their pancake mix for years now. It's been part of my post-long run breakfast tradition. If you're curious, if you want to check out their products yourself, head over to their website. You can use the code SINGLETRACK15 at checkout for 15% off your next order. Also, thanks to Morton for supporting this coverage. I recently used Morton's Hydro Gels during my run of the 100-mile wilderness in Maine. Um, it's excellent here, for example, is their 320 drink mix. You can also get it in the caffeinated form. They've got the 100 calorie caffeinated gels. New product being their bicarb. We just talked about this with Tom Evans on the show. Maybe you're listening to that episode right now. But if you're curious, head over to their website, morton.com. That's M-A-U-R-T-E-N.com. 
I love and trust these products. A couple other things I love with the gels, they go down easy, no palate fatigue. I cannot say the same thing about other gels and they're made with natural ingredients, no artificial colorings, no preservatives. So if you care about your overall health, if you care about what you're putting into your body, this is a great gel option. One more question. Do you, when you think about training for the demands of these races, like Western States, UTMB, which, which training do you prefer more? Like, do you enjoy the buildup for a race like Western States more? Or do you enjoy the buildup for a race like UTMB more? Talk about that. I love the, I love, I've done the same thing like three years now. And I, what I really enjoy is like the process of like in what March, April, I start like getting it like before that, it's just like a nice, you know, foundational I'm doing other running I'm like doing other like spring races or whatever. And then that like 10 to 12 weeks out from Western States, it really starts to ratchet down and, and you start to focus on your Western States training. And that includes a lot of like threshold runs down along the river in Portland. Um, and then that, like I have, I coach track as well during that time. And when track, when the track season's finished, all of a sudden my afternoons are open. It's like, Oh, I have all this extra time. And then I get my, my training really gets going. And each of those steps I really enjoy, like, and then, you know, shortly after that, I'm getting into the sauna and pulling back on my training. Like each, I've, I've now that I've gone through it all, I just like that kind of rhythm to the year. Um, and then, like, I always have handhelds when I'm. Um, I always carry handhelds when I'm training for Western States because I know that that's yeah. how I'm going to race. And I'm always like, oh, I can't wait to get those poles out, though. I can't wait to get those poles out. And the second that <laughs> Western States is done, the lakey poles come out. And, you know, like I said, I've, I've immediately started doing some adventure runs. Um, so, so liking one or the other, I just like, like that. I like the steps going, leading all the way up. And I mean, I do really, really love being in the mountains and I think I'd prefer the scenery and just the, the challenge of being in the mountains, number one. Um, but I do like that just kind of step-by-step -step process of getting fast and then shifting into mountain stuff. When you were talking about the handhelds there, it reminded me in one of your recent Instagram posts, you used the phrase equipment management when you were just providing an update on your training out there in, in Chamonix, which I think is a really interesting thing to think about. And I think as, you know, performances have improved in the sport, some of it, maybe a lot of it with certain athletes can be attributed to efficiency with your pack, efficiency at aid stations, stuff like that. Obviously, you're somebody that's dialed or appeared to have dialed this process at Western States. How has this been a factor in your training at UT for UTMB? It's it's just like knowing where things are in my pack. Like it, it's been really nice weather here, fairly warm. So, um, but but earlier it was it was raining, and I was able to kind of work on like, can I run and take out my rain jacket while I'm running and not not lose a step? Can I put stuff it back in? Like practicing all of those things. The storage of poles and and taking out of poles which um like getting a quiver is has been a helpful thing all of that stuff is it's it's just way more automatic and last year i honestly i was planning on using a bladder like up until probably a week before the race and hadn't really used the the bottles up front um and making that switch has been has been really helpful and to get comfortable with that stuff. I just wasn't quite comfortable with it, which is, you know, something that everybody uses the bottles in the front, I think, but it took me a while to figure it out. Um, yeah. so yeah, those are, those are a few little pieces of it. Um, like I think of it as like, when you think about some of the people who've won this race, uh, Xavier or Francois or Killian, like these are people that came from, the mountains, they're mountain athletes kind of, that's where they, that's where they started. And then they got into the trail running. And then there are other people who are kind of coming from the roads or, you know, like call collegiate running or whatever. Um, and those, I think those mountain athletes, like they're really good at knowing exactly what layers they need and where's their equipment and taking the time to say like, Hey, it's actually okay to take a second and get the layer on or off that I need to be more comfortable because in the long run, that's going to make me a, a that's going to, to keep me running stronger. So I feel like I'm learning from watching people like that. Um, I have a decent amount of, you know, backpacking and mountain experience, but certainly not as much as a lot of these people that 
grew up in the Alps. Um, so it's, it's still a learning process, but I feel like I'm getting it. Thanks to Brooks for sponsoring this UTMB coverage. I have been using their High Point collection, particularly the waterproof jacket and pants for hiking adventures, as well as their new and improved Cascadia 17, which is my favorite Cascadia since version 8, which I used for a through hike way back in 2014 of the Appalachian Trail. So if you want to check out all this gear, head over to brooksrunning.com forward slash single track for more information. I remember... And I'm probably going to paraphrase here, but before Western States, you said something along the lines of, I, I want to, I think I want to take a few more risks at this year's race. I maybe want to burn a few more matches. I want to venture a bit more into the unknown. And it did seem like you did that. And it obviously paid off in a huge way. Um, is that, do you have a similar intention going into this race or is, are you going to take a more conservative approach and hope that the race kind of comes to you as it may later on? How are you thinking about that? I don't think it's going to be like, I'm going to go out in the top 10 or anything like that. But I think like I was looking at my, my numbers last year. And I think I was in 90th at the top of the first climb or 90th in Les Uch, And I don't think I can let that happen again. I think I need to be kind of engaged a little bit earlier. Um, yeah. How about in terms of, uh, I think another thing that I'm curious about is just, where you see your competitive advantages on this course, they could be physical, they could be mental, it could be climbing, descending. Like where do you, when you think about the race evolving, where do you think your competitive advantages are going to be on display? Where are you drawing confidence from? Um, yeah. Uh, I think it'll be in like Grand Colfere to the finish is where I want to be moving up um i think that i do a pretty good job of managing my nutrition and managing my effort levels so that i can stay pretty even throughout a race and i think that that shows in live feeds that you know it's i'm not someone who's like sitting down and taking 10 minutes at an aid station i'm able to get in and get out and, and get what i need and keep moving um and just keep steady and i think being steady doesn't look sexy before Cormier, it doesn't look sexy before Champé Lock. Um but then it starts to look really good. <laughs> Last question. Um I think it just comes down to goal setting for this race. When you think about your intentions at UTMB, is a successful day does it revolve around process? Does it revolve around fun? Is it a competitive result? Uh how are you thinking about that? Like what are your, what are your goals for this race? Like what are your primary goals I should say? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely comes down to top 10, which I feel like used to be top five. And now like <laughs> the old top 10 is like top 20. So, you know, it's definitely like a, it's a, a big task ahead. Um, and in the same, and in the same light, I, I do just want to, like, I know that the way, the, the way that I get into the top 10 is by running the very best that I can being the best that I can from start to finish in running my own race. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I like my big goal kind of going, going into this season was, and I talked to the coach about this and I was like, you know what? I do want to do Western States. And I just haven't, we haven't seen too many people do the Western States. We haven't seen for a while, like actually men, yeah. um, we haven't seen men do well in the Western States UTMB double. And this year we have like, everyone is, everyone from the top 10 of western states is do is is doing utmb so are almost so i think we're going to see someone someone knock it out of the park um but that's something that i would i'd really like to to do is like top 10 both races that was what i said going into the race or going into the season and that's what i want to accomplish are you self coached right now or do you, do you have a coach no i'm coached by matt lay um matt lay. He's located okay, cool. in boise old old okay. Bay Area guy. I got to ask one more question. I, I know I said last question, but one more question yeah, for, right. before we wrap up. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of veterans of the sport note that they they sort of have premonitions before the race, or they have a pretty solid sense of whether or not they the, the body and the the mind and the spirit will be there to go to the well and not necessarily put together a great result, but to the body to kind of obey, the legs to obey, stuff like that on race. Like Dylan Bowman has talked about, you know 
2021 Hard Rock, he, he kind of had that premonition ahead of time, whereas there was more fear, uncertainty, doubt heading into this past year's race. Do you follow a similar thought process when it comes to a race like UTMB? Like, do you have a sense of generally how things are going to go or do does everything kind of unravel or appear on race day for you? Yeah, I think, I mean, going to Western States races, like, I think there was def- definitely like in 2021, there was this feeling of like, originally I just thought like, I want to get in the top 10, top 10 is a big deal. Like I was 14th last year, that would be a great step forward. And I ended up second and early, like in that two or three weeks leading up to it, I started thinking like, well, I think I might be able to get in the top five. And if I can get in the top five, I can get in the top three. And if I'm in the top three, why can't I, I win this thing? And, uh, and you know, that I don't wouldn't necessarily say I came in close. I mean, second place kind of looks close, but an hour behind or hour or whatever behind Jim is a different deal. Um, and the similar feeling with, with Western States, uh, going into it. And so all of that to say, like leading up, like I'm what we're 10 days, 12 days out or whatever. Um, I feel good. I feel like, like I don't need to just like hold myself to like, well, top 10 would just be great. Like maybe top 10, not maybe top five is possible too. Um, I want to, I want to say that that's, that's possible for me. Um, if I, if I run the best race that I'm capable of. So, um, so it's there that, that feeling of I can do this. Love it. Well, Tyler, it's always a pleasure to chat. Thank you so much for your time. We'll make sure to link to all of your social media and coaching in the show notes. Um, anything you want to leave the audience with any, any final thoughts before we go? Um, Hey, got a, got a new mustache. So new <laughs> facial hair. So that's a, just pointing Huge. that out. It's like, you know, it's time to, it's time to have some fun. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, for those that don't watch on YouTube, Tyler oh, yeah. has one of the best, one of the best, be- one of the best beards in the ultra running game. This is a new look. It looks great. And uh, I should, I should have called it out at the start. Love it. Well, anyways, thank you so much, Tyler. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks, Ben.